Oops. Welcome to the video. If you're new here, my name is Chris and I build productivity apps. I usually focus on one productivity app per video. So today we're focusing on Luna. Quick context, Luna is a budgeting app that I created to help me curb spending. And it's also just a way for me to get better as a developer and a designer. That's the app that we're gonna be talking about today. It's been a minute since my last Luna video. So I wanted to do a little bit of an update to show you guys where the app's at, what I've been working on. And I think the app's been around on the app store for about three months now. So this is basically a three month update Vers video. Okay, so let's start with the numbers. I know a lot of people will be interested here. Two months ago, I posted a video on how the app got its first paying users, which was a huge milestone. And now we're at about 10 active users. There's actually been 13 paying customers. Three have already canceled, very sad, but that leaves us with 10 active users right now. So that's about $50 in monthly recurring revenue since the app costs about $5 a month. And the total that's been made so far in the app is $75. So haven't hit $100, that's the next milestone. If no one else cancels, I think we're gonna hit that $100 mark next month. So that's where the app's at in terms of revenue. And then in terms of signups, we've had almost 800 signups in the last 60 days, which is also actually pretty good considering how little I've been marketing this app. And that's something I also wanted to talk about too. A lot of the numbers you're seeing are with me probably putting in about three to four hours of work a week. And in terms of marketing, I really haven't been doing much over the last two months. A lot of the traffic comes from these YouTube videos. Recently, most of it's been coming from organic app store search. So this is people searching for budgeting apps in the app store. And that's actually had a huge impact on the third number I wanna talk about, which is retention. I have a whole video on retention. I'll link it in the description, but retention is how many users who have signed up are still using your app a week later. So PostHog is an analytics tool that I use to track basically everything in the app, feature usage, retention, sign up. And this specifically is the retention graph that they provide. The way that I have this set up is it's tracking how many people sign up and are still using the app seven days later. On average, the number is 7%. And I've actually been tracking this number each month. Two months ago, the number was 26%. And then the month before that, it was 33%. So this number is actually going down. We went from 33 to around 7%, which is pretty bad. And that's something that I wanted to show you guys. In a world where on Twitter, everyone's just posting how their app has millions of users and is doing really well, the reality is not everything is positive growth. So in this case, in the last three months, the retention has nosedived from 33% to 7% for my app. My main hypothesis is that the audience who are using Luna are now not people who found it through me and through my social media, but who are finding it on the app store organically. And there's a huge difference between these two types of people. People who typically find my apps through my YouTube videos, they already have an idea of the app going into it because they saw one of my videos. They're usually more forgiving and the expectations are usually a lot lower. And on the other side, the people who find it through the app store, a lot of the times they don't know a solo app developer is building this. They're usually also a little less forgiving with mistakes and bugs. When they sign up for an app and then they encounter a bug, they're a lot more likely to just churn and stop using the product. I think this recent shift in downloads coming not from YouTube, but instead from the organic app store has really impacted retention. And I'm not even unhappy about that because less than 10% retention was exactly what I was anticipating for a product like this. To be honest, when I saw the 33% a few months ago, I kind of knew that this number was a little too good to be true. It took almost a year for my other app, Ellie, to get to around a 33, 35% retention. And that was with a lot of work. So I knew that that number was gonna go down. And I think seven to 10%, that sounds pretty reasonable. I actually think that's an okay baseline for me to be working with. So that's where retention's at. And that's why I think retention has dropped so heavily in the last few months. If you're interested in tracking retention, I highly recommend checking out a tool like PostHog. Huge shout out to PostHog for actually sponsoring this video. If you've been following along, you know that I've been recommending PostHog way before they started sponsoring my videos. But if you need a tool to track retention or any other analytics, they're the ones that I recommend. Link down in the description to check them out. And if you're signing up, please let them know that I'm the one that sent you. So those are the updated numbers. 10 paying users, that's around 50 monthly recurring revenue, around 800 signups in the last 60 days. And the week one retention is around 7%, which is a massive low from the 33% week one retention that we had two months ago. That's where the app's at, three months going live. My main focus over the last two months has been to improve week one retention. And to do that, I've been shipping tons of features that I think would move the needle on that number. And after talking to a bunch of users who have churned, this is what's going on. A lot of users signed up for this budgeting app and they are expecting a couple of key features. And to be quite honest, Luna is missing those key features. I knew that I probably only had 30% of the features that a lot of the main budgeting apps had, but I knew that I'd be able to catch up and ship them over the next couple months. If you saw my last update video, you saw that I shipped recurring transactions and charts. And these are two very requested features and features that people expect in a budgeting app, but there was still a lot of stuff missing. And in the last two months, I shipped two more major features and a bunch of smaller improvements to the app. So let's go through some of these right now. When Luna launched, it was primarily 
really an expense tracking app, but something a lot of people expected in a budgeting app is the ability to track savings. So now when you're in the app, you have the ability to choose whether a category is an expense category or a savings category. And these savings categories will now appear at the bottom of the homepage and they act a little bit differently than the expense categories. Like instead of setting an amount budgeted for that category, you instead set how much you wanna fund that category. And adding transactions are actually a good thing. Let's say you have a car emergency savings fund and you say, I wanna add $200 every single month to this fund. You can now start keeping track of that in the app. The feature honestly wasn't too complicated. The data structure barely changed. I now added this new category type field so you can choose whether it's an expense or a savings category. I just had to make a bunch of modifications throughout the app to account for this new category. Like the charts and the widgets, they had to be updated. Money put in these categories did not impact these charts because these are charts that reflect expenses. So that was the first major thing I shipped. So the second feature that I shipped was the ability to track income. This was a pretty straightforward feature from a technical perspective. It didn't really require anything complex, but this was a little complicated from a UI UX perspective because there were so many ways that you can take this feature. What I decided on was to allow users to log their income as a transaction. So when you create a transaction, you can now choose whether this is an expense or if this is income. And the reason I decided to do it this way was because when I was reading the feedback board and seeing how people would use this income feature, there were so many different edge cases and scenarios that I wanted to support. And this seemed like one of the best ways to do it. Let me show you guys two completely different scenarios. Scenario one is someone that has a monthly income that rarely ever changes. Let's say they make $5,000 a month. What they could do is just log a new transaction, set it as income, and then set the recurring frequency to once a month. So at the beginning of the month, this income will be logged and appear in the app. Then we have someone else who is a contract worker and their payment fluctuates in terms of amount and frequency all the time. This structure allows them to input it whenever they get paid. The way that this is set up, it supports both of these cases very well. Something that I spent a lot of time on was where does the income actually go here? If you look at the current screen of the app, it's not really clear where this should be going. I tried a bunch of different variations and this is what I settled on. There's a new section at the top of the app that shows the income for the month. When you click it, it drops down and it shows you a breakdown of your spending. It shows the income minus your expenses, minus your savings if there are any, and it shows the remaining amount. The ability to see this leftover amount is the most natural reason I could think that someone wants to track their income in the app. Or at least that's the reason I would want to use income here. So that's what I decided to do for this feature was show the income and then when you toggle it, it'll show this breakdown view. And then you can click the little income line and I tried to make this as clear as possible. The sheet appears and it shows you all the income that you logged for the month. There's a lot of people who probably don't want to use this feature and they just want to use Luna as an expense tracking app. So I added the ability to turn this on and off in the settings. So when you click it, there's absolutely no trace that income is even a thing in the app. Overall, this was a very simple feature from a technical perspective. I just had to spend a couple days figuring out the UI UX, test it on my phone, and come up with a very helpful solution that I would actually use. I've been test driving it over the last week and it has actually been pretty good. I think this is a feature a lot of users were expecting when they signed up for a budgeting app. I think this will actually improve week one retention. And then there were a couple other small things I shipped over the last two weeks. The two coolest ones are probably this revamped bulk category view. So before I allowed people to bulk edit their categories so they can easily manipulate their their budget for the month without having to go into each category individually. But something I hated with it was you had to do a lot of mental math to figure out how much am I spending in total? How much am I spending on a monthly basis with all of these edits? I revamped it so it's a lot more compact. We do the calculations of the weekly and the monthly categories for you and you still have the ability to edit everything on that one screen. So you can edit the emoji, you can edit the name. And if you click this, it actually expands and then you can edit whether this is a savings category or if this is weekly or monthly. All of this is still there. And in the end, I think this is a way more functional screen. That was another improvement that I shipped. And then the last improvement I wanted to call out, which is my absolute favorite thing, was I added transaction suggestions. Now when you're logging a transaction, you're typing it out, it, we will automatically pull from your past categories and suggest names that you've already used. Getting gas is something that I type twice a month. So now when I click racetrack and I type R, it automatically suggests racetrack at the top. I can click it and it'll pre-fill this out and it'll also fill out the category. This is probably the best quality of life improvement that I've shipped for the entire app, like hands down. It completely changes the experience. Okay, so what's the plan for the next couple months. Number one focus is still trying to improve week one retention. There's still a couple more features that we need to get to feature parity with some of these other budgeting apps. First major thing is going to be zero-based budgeting. If you're not familiar with zero-based budgeting, it's basically a budgeting methodology and other apps like YNAB use this methodology. It's a very powerful way of budgeting and it's something that I have all of the features and pieces to support. So I'm gonna make some tweaks so that the app can fully support that. And another thing is source tracking. This is the ability when you're logging a transaction to specify where did it come from? Did this come from a 
credit card or a bank account. That's another major feature that users are looking for. And then things like chart and widget improvements. Right now the charts are view only, you can't really interact with them, but that's something I think people are really expecting. The ability to drill down into these charts and look at their spending data. So that's my plan right now, is just to keep shipping these features, get to feature parity. And then once we're there, I'll probably start going way harder on the marketing. So I'm gonna save that for a future video on what my marketing game plan is and how I plan on tackling that. But honestly, it's not on my mind right now until I get some of these key features out. Hopefully you guys found this video interesting. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this kind of content, check out my Instagram and TikTok. I post almost every other day about building productivity apps. And obviously if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.